Roll. We live. I, think I can we tell because you're just staring at me all funky. Uh, all right, so we're back with another episode of Let's Talk Fish. We don't. We haven't been live for too long, y'all. Too darn long. Uh, and we apologize. Actually, Thrift is getting ready to hit the road early in the morning, so he's at home packing. If he hasn't already hit the road, he might actually hit the road this afternoon. I can't remember. He just said he wasn't available for a show tonight. So I got our boy Tyler Ward. Tyler normally is like behind the scenes over there, kind of making sure that Thrift and I don't screw anything up from a tech side of things. More or yeah, less. More or less. More yeah, or less. Because we're because we're pretty good at that sometimes. Have to get everybody so they can operate their chat and everything. Yeah. Well, no, not everybody. Brian. Thrift. Yeah, thrift. you have to get thrift. Thrift's always like, every show, he's the same question. He's yeah. like, Tyler, how do I get on the YouTube? Well, you just click on Fishing that Fishing electronics, he's pretty good, but when it comes to yeah, it's, isn't that mobile amazing? devices. A smartphone. It's nothing. a good thing his hummingbird graphs on his boat don't look like iPhones because I'm pretty sure he'd be screwed. It'd be pretty bad. Yeah, it'd be bad. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's jump right into it, y'all. We, uh, we're missing Mr. Thrift tonight. Uh, he is, uh, like I said, he's headed to... New York, aren't they? They're headed up to Champlain, I believe. I think, I think Is it so. Champlain? I think so. Yeah, I think they're headed up to Champlain for a, uh, <coughs> their uh, next stage of their BPT uh, tour. And we are, uh, but we needed to do a show. We haven't had a show in a while. And I said, you know, the heck with it. Um, I'll jump in the studio by myself. Tyler jumped in with me. Tyler's, Tyler's here for support tonight. He's going he's gonna to have some good questions later, too. He's probably going to have some questions for me. He was hitting me with questions before the show that I weren't really prepared to answer. But that's what this show's about, right? right. It's about um, helping you guys out, educating, um, helping each other out, really. But then we're going to talk about some pretty hot topics in the industry lately. And one um, just so happens to be the latest, and I'm going to call it cheating because it was blatant cheating, uh, incident that has happened in our industry and you know we're going to address that later we got a special call and guest and I actually it's, it, this is funny anybody that watches Luke Duncan or listens to Luke Duncan's podcast he's a close friend of mine I got on his rear end last night I texted him I said because I saw his uh, I saw his podcast drop on YouTube and I, I and I listened to a lot of Luke stuff Luke, Luke stuff it's great and uh, it's great material to listen to when I on these long drives especially I listen to all kinds of fishing podcasts and just all kinds of podcasts in general but I said, man, I can't believe you stole my guest. I said, I was getting ready to have him on tomorrow night, and we're still going to have him on. But I listened to Luke's today, so hopefully we don't get too repetitive. But we are going to have Mr. Zach Burge himself on, and we're going to do it through a call-in feature, a little Bluetooth speaker, microphone setup that you see to my right over here, and um, hoping that that actually comes through well for y'all. And if it does, it's going to open up some, uh, some new options for us. Uh, meaning we're going to have more call-in guests in the future, and uh, Lord knows who, we're gonna, who we might have on. We're going we're gonna to really branch out. And Options get wild. are endless. Yeah, we're going to get wild and crazy um, with our guests uh, if, if, this, if this works out good. So y'all y'all give us feedback later in the show on uh, the sound and uh, how clear and crisp everything is when we have Zach uh, get on here in just a little bit. But <clears throat> So first off, I want to say a big shout out to Angler's Choice Marine, who, as y'all know, they are the presenting sponsor of Let's Talk Fish, and they are a, um, a, a ginormous ranger dealer, White River Marine dealer. They sell uh, all the White River Marine brands. They have uh, three locations, Martinsville, Virginia, um, Lexington, North Carolina, and Spindale, North Carolina, and uh, they've actually got a really, really strong inventory right now. They are rocking and rolling. Um, what are you doing, Jeff? I'm going to watch my son play basketball. Oh, okay. Well, I don't see green lights on these cameras, so I guess they're working. What? Oh, I see a red light. Red oh, red. That means red. Mean red means right. go. Don't no, <laughs> mean something. Don't call me. I'll be at the gym. Okay. Got it. All right. So Jeff's belling we'll on. Figure it that's, out. That, yeah, that's kind of scary. But we got Tyler over here. He knows how to handle it. But yeah, y'all. Uh, if you're in the market for a new boat, check out English Choice Marine. They've got a huge inventory, great customer service, and they just uh, and they just uh, um, are just good people. They're just good down to earth people. But we appreciate their support, and uh, Brian and I have dealt with them for years and years. And uh, like I said, they will take care of you before and after the sale, and that's that's a big deal nowadays. Um, it really is. So, big shout out to English Choice Marine, and um, we uh, we're going to talk about. Real quick, we won't spend a lot of time on it because I know y'all are eager to hear from Mr. Burge. We're going to talk about uh, the smallmouth beatdown, the smallmouth smackdown, whatever you want to call it, the smallmouth, smallmouth annihilation, 
Um, you got any other terms for that, Tyler? No, I think you covered it. Yeah, did I cover uh, it? Um, I'm sure somebody out there has another term. But. <laughs> it was truly, and I have mixed feelings about the St. Lawrence event. Anybody that followed the Bassmaster Elite Tournament St. Lawrence River here a couple of weeks back was, uh, um, I'm sure, pretty taken back by the weights because, I mean, I was. I was fishing the tournament. I practiced for the event. I knew the weights were going to be good, but I did never guessed in a million years that there would have been 62 bags over 20 pounds the first day. Um, I'd have called you a liar to your face, and I'd have said, you know, the, I look back at some of the events and, you know, if you caught 18 pounds a day, you flew into the day three cut. There were like 10 guys that caught over 40 pounds in two days that did not make the day three cut. Um, Scott Martin, my roommate, uh, was one of those. And, you know, I feel bad for him because <clears throat> we sit there and talk about that tournament. And after day one, I have like right at right under 20. Scott Martin has 20 and some change. And Canterbury has 20 and some change. None of us are in the cut. Like, all the 20 pounds, none of us are in the cut. And we go back to the house, and I'm sitting there, you know, as a professional angler after day one, <clears throat> it's a big deal mentally, right? Because you're, you're, you're starting to make some, some uh, calculated decisions in your head about day two and what you think you're going to need to make day three, how you're going to figure out a way to possibly win the tournament, um, are you in a good position to, to take some risks, you know, things like that. So... We're looking at the leaderboard, and we're all just like sitting there with our jaw drop, going, "All right, so we're all catching 20 pounds of smallmouth, and the guy who caught 21 and a half is 40 places ahead of us, you know, or 30 places ahead of us, whatever it was." How do you make an adjustment for that? Like, how do you go out and say, "I need to catch 22 instead of 21," or "I need to catch 24 instead of 23"? You know what I'm saying? Because if you're catching four, four and a half, five pound smallmouth, it's just a matter of the guys that are consistently catching those four and three quarters instead of those four to quarters that really separate themselves in a tournament like that. So that's the only reason I'm not a huge fan of a, of a, of a place like that uh, for tournament reasons. But is it the best smallmouth fishery in the country today as we speak? I would 100% say yes. Uh, if you're looking to yeah. break your PB smallmouth, go to Lake Ontario, go to St. Lawrence River, spend a week up there, spend three or four days, um, it is an unbelievable fishery. It is super healthy, and it is kicking out giant smallmouth. And those smallmouth there, they're just built different. Like, right, like with the current, the river fish are just, they're, they're, even the lake fish, they're just built different. Yeah, and um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken by watching everything and the weights and all that, it, it wasn't just everything wasn't caught in one place. It was multiple places, was, was it not? It was. It was all over the map. I mean, I, did, I, never, I never fished the lake during the tournament. I had 60, almost 63 pounds for three days, finished 38, decent finish, but had, had no chance of winning whatsoever. Um, wasn't even close, you know, over 20 pounds a day. Wasn't even close to, to making a run at it. And I spent my entire tournament in the river. Um, there is 20-pound bags of smallmouth uh, in the entire river system, the St. Lawrence River system, there are 20 pound small bags of smallmouth all across Lake Ontario. I say 20, I mean, there's 25, 26, 27 yeah. pound bags of small, 30 pound bags of smallmouth yeah. out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there were guys spread all over the place. And that was the beauty of going out of Clayton. There were guys that, that went both directions up, you know, up the river towards uh, Waddington. There were guys, or Ogdensburg in that area was pretty, Morristown, I think, was a popular area for this event. And then there was a ton of guys that went out in the lake and absolutely just smashed them. Um, I actually fished the river within 15 miles either way of Clayton, the takeoff point, and uh, caught a ton of fish and, you know, caught a lot of four to five pound class fish. It just didn't, you know, I just never dreamed that, you know, there would be that many guys that caught 20 pounds like every day. You know, I, and, and every time that we think as an elite angler, we look at the weights and we're sitting there calculating our head about, well, what's it going to take to make day three? What's it going to take to make, you know, day four? Um, they they double the weights. Like, these guys are that good. They just double the weights. Like, there's been so many tournaments in the past three or four years since I moved over to the elites where the weights just simply double. And typically in the past, especially with larger fields, I think when it has more of an impact because the pressure that the fish get, you know, with 150, 200 boats, it's a little different than, you know, 90 boats. Yeah. So the pressure that the fish get is on a whole different level uh, with huge field compared to what the elites are. So... That plays into it along with the fact that um, you're fishing against some of the most talented anglers in the world. Uh, I have to address Jay Shakurik 
And if you look at his last name, a lot of people out there are probably still going, how in the world do you yeah. say Shakurik when it's spelled with a P? I remember watching it live, and I was <laughs> like, me and Heather was watching live. I said, pronounce that for me, and she butchered it. Perusa kick up yeah, at the cat. straight up butchered yeah, it. Yeah, muskrat, something like that. Uh, but anyway, no, uh, it was an impressive performance, to say the least. And he set a record, obviously, for the first person to break 100 pounds of smallmouth in four days, which is unreal. Uh, shout out to Corey Johnson too, who uh, I felt so bad for Corey because, um, you know, Corey has has won a lot of tournaments on that river. I don't know if he's ever won a tour level event. I, he won an open. Um, phenomenal fisherman. Uh, him and his brother both. And <clears throat> Corey is a um, he's a smallmouth uh, genius. I mean, you know, him and Chris they just they they know that place like the back of their hand, and they and they they dominate that fishery. And for him to break a hundred pounds and not win. Um, you know, I could see it in his face on the final day uh, at the weigh-in that he was a little disheartened that, you know, that he broke 100 pounds and didn't get the W. But, Corey, you still caught 100 pounds of smallmouth, yeah, dude. Like, incredible. to get a century incredible. belt is one thing, but to get a century belt with smallmouth is like in a class by itself. You know, that's truly an amazing feat, and that's something he'll never forget. So, I mean, even him, I mean, he's probably, he's fished there, obviously, his life. Yeah. But how many times has he done that? He yeah. thought he could have done that. Oh, 100 percent, yeah. And uh, to catch to catch what he caught the last day, you know, he had a little bitty hiccup. And when I say a hiccup, he caught t- poor guy caught 21 pounds on day two, I think it was, yeah. and that just set him back. If he'd have caught what he caught on day two every other day, he'd have blown it away. Because last day he brought in almost 29 pounds of smallmouth. And that's crazy. And y'all got to remember, these fish. <coughs> excuse me, when we were up there. The majority of these fish were post spawn, like, like immediate post spawn, like they just got done spawning, and they still weighed that. So a, a month later, like right now, being up there, those fish have packed on even more weight, and those fish with the habitat and the forage that they have are some of the healthiest, prettiest, hardest fighting fish, if not the hardest fighting fish in the entire country. Um, and I would put that fishery up against anywhere else in the country, unless there's some little hidden gem somewhere that we don't know about um that fishery is is it's unbelievable it truly is it it, was there was there anyone that didn't weigh a limit in that tournament actually i don't think there was i don't think so either i I really don't and and that's a good point tyler because you know out of 90 something elite guys every tournament there's always a few guys that don't weigh a limit or there's you know sometimes 30 or 40 that don't if it's tough fishery tough conditions but we had every single elite angler, if I'm not mistaken, every day that they hit the water weighed in a limit of bass. And that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Daniel Jones, you're right, man. Century belts on smallmouth, it may never be done again. Um, you know, one thing to keep in mind, too, we, we truly had the perfect storm. And what I mean by that is every day those, those guys that committed to the lake <clears throat> that were fishing for those giant, true giant bags, 25 to 28 pounds. And I... I knew in the river it would be really hard to catch 25. I knew 22, 23 might be possible, but to catch 25 multiple days was going to be really challenging. Um, So the guys that committed to the lake had four days of unbelievable weather, perfect weather. Um, I'm not going to say it was perfect, but it was was pretty – it was very uncommon. I mean, you don't – if you get – in a four-day event, if you get two days where you can go out there and fish the lake – uh, and, and run around freely and do what you need to do and cover water and, and, and really milk your areas and be able to uh, uh, be as efficient as you possibly can with the, with, you know, with, with the wind and, and the waves and things like that. We, we had four days of that, and that's, that, that played into the hands of the guys that committed to the lake all four days. And to say that century belts on smallmouth may never be done again, I'm not going to say it will never be done again, but – it's got to be a perfect storm again, and, and rarely do we see that in our sports. So Usually it's this type of tournament. You're watching live, and you see people taking rollers over the bow. Yeah, exactly. And you didn't see – I don't know <laughs> if you've seen any of that. If you did, not much at all. And that takes, a, that takes a uh, – it takes, it takes a lot more concentration. It takes a lot more boat control. It just takes a lot of your focus off of kind of the current situation and being able to – um, truly maximize your area, you know, when you're battling those giant waves and things like that. And then it takes a toll on your equipment on top of that, you know. So guys are dealing with equipment issues when you're battling four and five and six footers. But phenomenal tournament, unbelievable performance by uh, Jay, uh, who also, on top of that, was the youngest 
angler to ever win an elite series event. It, I think he was 23. 23 and some change. I actually think there was another 23-year-old uh, that won an event. I'm not sure who it was. Uh, but Jay was younger by whatever months. It was months like a couple or, months or something. Yeah, whatever months and days yeah, it was. Um, <clears throat> so, again, congratulations to Jay. I, I think he's going to have a long, uh, very successful career. He seems like the real deal. Uh, good guy. Very soft-spoken. Um, but he's a, a, a very accomplished angler at, at, at his age, for his age and, and very mature, too, because to be able to handle that pressure of going into the final day of an elite tournament with a lead and, uh, and just going out there, putting your head down, getting the job done and forgetting everything else, is, uh, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. It truly does. And, and hats off to Jay for an for a unreal performance. Guys, if you got any questions about the St. Lawrence event, shoot them in. I hadn't seen anyone comment on here. Yet, yeah, if I'm, I, I've got a bunch of comments, but I don't have uh, don't have anything relating to St. Lawrence. But talk about what you were doing, <laughs> your techniques. Oh yeah, so we'll we'll take a couple minutes to talk about that. I, I I called a so since we were coming off the spawn, I called the majority. Oh, I just bounced that pin up in there. I don't know how I did that. I uh, caught the majority of my fish on a little hand tied fly, which is a big deal. The little uh, little hair jig up here, three thirty second ounce was my best size. Um, I was throwing it on a seven foot four loose rod. Um, it was a signature series, and I threw it with a uh, Hyper Mag spinning reel, 2000 series spinning reel, uh, eight pound P line, uh, the uh, Spin X braid with a seven pound Spin X leader. And if you haven't tried that Spin X braid and that Spin X leader, guys, it's the deal. I, uh, I threw that fly. I, I did catch some fish on a drop shot, but I was sight fishing a lot of my fish, not, not spawning fish. Just cruising fish, little wolf packs, things like that, up on flats and anywhere from three to seven feet of water. If you've never seen, uh, been to the St. Lawrence, uh, you can see 20 feet deep there. The water's crystal clear. It looks like the, the Florida Keys or it looks like an aquarium almost. And uh, it's beautiful water and uh, sight fishing those big smallmouth, especially with that little fly, is a, uh, it's just a, uh, um, is a lot of fun. And it's as much fun as you'll ever have. Uh, GW, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. It, you know, what made you decide to stay in the river when bigger fish live in the lake and, and the weather was nice? I spent about a half a day of practice in the lake, and I caught a bunch of fish, but I did not see the five and six pounders that some of the other guys found. I went straight into the river. I started catching some four pounders, caught a couple fives, and I thought I could have a really solid, consistent finish. I knew in the back of my mind, which some people would criticize me for this, some wouldn't, that... You know, my goal every year coming into uh, the Elite Series is to make the Bassmaster Classic. Uh, that's where you get the most publicity. That's where your opportunity is to further your career. That's where the, the biggest stage in bass fishing is. That's where the most prestigious win in bass fishing is. Uh, that is my goal every year to make the Bassmaster Classic. I knew with what I found in the river that I looked at the extended forecast and it called for good weather Thursday, Friday, uh, potentially to change over the weekend. So. In my mind, I was trying to plan it out, and I'm sitting here saying, I can fish the river and take a lot of variables out of the equation, meaning if, if something crazy pops up, like the weather starts to change and the wind starts to shift or whatever, whatever. And I thought I could catch over 20 pounds a day on average in the river, and historically speaking, that was typically a top 20 or better finish. Now, I ended up 38th. Now, I'm happy with that finish, it's a good finish, and it kept me inside the top 10 in the angler of the year standings but they called them better than i expected and uh i just you know there again that that's kind of a calculated decision that i made uh, but i did get out of it with a good finish uh, i knew i wasn't in contention for the win uh, but i wanted to stay as high up in the points and i wanted to try to lock my, myself in for a classic title and going to lake Oahe, where I, I, there can be a lot of variables there too uh, and on to the uh, uh, Mississippi River in La Crosse, Wisconsin. I wanted to make it a little easier on myself um, from a decision standpoint to, uh, to, to make sure I was in the Classic, you know, to make sure I was in the Classic. Um, and we, we talked about uh, the area. He asked the area of the river that I fished. And I fished uh, from Clayton to the mouth of the, the lake, and then I fished from Clayton to the Narrows. So that's probably, what, a 16, 17-mile stretch of river roughly. roughly. Um, that is where um, that is where I concentrated the majority of my efforts. Seemed like there was a lot of really good quality fish between Clayton and the mouth of the lake, and then obviously on a, on out into the lake. But from Clayton to the mouth of the lake, there's a lot of really, you know, 
really good quality four plus pound smallmouth, and that's kind of where I concentrate the majority of my time. Jordan Thompson, hey Jordan, uh, he said, "Has there been any other elite event where you average twenty pounds and don't make the cut?" I don't, uh, I don't know that there has, to be honest. I mean, Lake Fork, Lake Fork for sure, um, and there may have been a couple other ones, but Lake Fork for sure, uh, Jordan. Probably another Texas lake if it was somewhere. I yeah, imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Daniel wanted to know if I think Lake Oahe will get close to 100 pounds. I don't. Uh, I have no idea. You know, I've never been there. I know some of the guys that went there in pre-practice last year said that Oahe is an unbelievable fishery. We might actually see 100 pounds there. I heard Davey Height talking about we might see 100 pounds there. We'll see. I mean, I hear it's going to be another smallmouth beatdown, and uh, it could be a fun event to watch. I just, uh, if it's that good and there's going to be that many 20-pound bags, uh, I'm going to have to figure out and practice, you know, kind of what it's going to take to 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 catch more than we think. What it's, you know, what you know, what I'm saying, like like at the St. Lawrence River, we're like, oh, we're catching 20 pounds. This is going to be good, yeah. you know. And then we catch 20 pounds, and we're not in the cut. So, yeah, I felt really <clears throat> bad last tournament. So, I usually text you before a tournament, or you know, after to say, you know, good job, you know, try to encouragement. <laughs> and I'm like, well, he caught 20 pounds. <laughs> I don't know what and to say, like, and he's like um, in 50th place. Yeah. No, I I don't, what do you do? First day, I think I was in 60, 60 something. 63rd with 1915 like, I don't even or something. Know what to say to you? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're better off just not even saying anything. Yeah. You've done what you can. <laughs> uh, say. Good job, but catch 23 tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, all right. <clears throat> Let's get our guest on the phone. I yep. told him we'd give him a ring about 7:20. It's 7:23, and uh, we're gonna jump into another topic. Okay, and this this topic has to do with uh, where well, you saw it in our uh, in our subject um, has to do with cheating and the integrity of our sport. So uh, Tyler's ringing him in right now. I'm assuming, right? I'm getting ready. To yep, getting ready. We're gonna to try this. We're gonna try to do this. Y'all, let us know if you can't hear um, can't hear our guest. You might have to talk a little closer to the speaker. Me? Maybe. We'll have to play with it and see how okay. it right. works. This is kind of a trial and error deal for us. So if it doesn't work, we apologize. Um, we're still going to talk hot topics here All in right. just a minute. Let's but here we go. Again, we're going to have a, a, a giveaway at the end of the show, y'all. We're going to have a trivia giveaway like normal. We're going to give away a big old box of Lunker Tex goodies. That's right. So uh, y'all stay tuned for the end of the show. Be sure to get in on that. Right. You ready, Mr. Tyler? Let's try it. All here right. we go. It's ringing. I hear it. You better turn it up, though, because it's hard to hear. Hello. Zach. Yes, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, buddy. You uh, you sound like you're driving. You said you might be. Let us know if y'all can yeah, hear me. Yeah, do, do I need to pull over? No, you're good. You're good. We're going to uh, okay. We're gonna make sure everybody else can hear you good. This is the first time we've had a calling guest, so you ought to feel honored. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, we uh, we have you on a Bluetooth. Um, I would uh, I, we got you on a Bluetooth speaker that's up to a microphone, so everything should be good. As long as you can hear me good, we should be good to go. Everybody said they can hear you great, so we've got a uh, got about 125 people listening live. Uh, no pressure though. No, I know Zach won't take no pressure. Um, you're headed up to Cayuga, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, we uh, appreciate you coming on, man. It's been a while since you and I chatted. Usually. Uh, we chatted a little bit back in the good FLW, the good old FLW days on the water a little bit about fishing and kind of comparing some notes here and there. And, you know, I always thought a lot of you, and you're a great angler, a good guy. You keep it real, and especially on social media, I like that. And uh, you're a big turkey hunter, too, so we got a lot in common. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I know you were on with uh, Mr. Luke Duncan last night. Uh, we, uh, we're going we're gonna to touch on some of that. A um, couple different things I want to talk about to you, but um, you know, one thing, one thing first off and, and, and foremost is you, uh, you know, you've been, you've had a heck of a career, especially at FLW, but then jumping into the BPT, you, uh, let's see, have you made every red crest thus far? Uh, yes. Yeah, you've made every red crest every so year um, so far, and, and, and you've been busting it over there, and I know, uh, I know you're fishing the opens this year. I know you wanted to do a cumulative deal, um, but that didn't work out due to some different things. Uh, but you're uh, you're crushing it in the central division, right? You're uh, top, inside the top ten, correct? 
Yeah, I believe I'm in 10th right now with uh, two elite guys ahead of me. Yeah, so that would that would bump on down to uh, to what seventh? Is that seventh spot or something like that? Sixth spot, I guess. Six or seven. Ah, uh, I'm not sure really. Uh, yeah. That, well, I got a I got a lot of faith in you. I, I would love to see you over here fishing with us, but you know, bottom line is there's there's two there's two major tours in the U.S. Not, you know, none of them are perfect. Let's just be honest. But you know, one thing that I've always had. Uh, kind of a kind of a personal issue with and thrift's not here tonight so i can talk talk bad all i want but no i'm <laughs> i'm I'm, a, I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit but uh i uh, he's actually driving too i believe should be driving it's a long way to cayuga but he uh you know one thing with with mlf that's interesting to me obviously the, the format's a lot different and i you know it's, it's a love hate thing some guys really love it some guys aren't a fan of it but you know, one thing about MLF, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this before we kind of dive into some other topics, is, you know, when when you have, I don't know how many, is it a dozen guys that, that you're fishing against that actually have equity in the company, or is it more than a dozen? Uh, I believe it's 13. 13, okay. Um, so 13 guys, right, that have ownership in the company, along with Cronky that came in and and kind of kind of was the the money man behind the whole deal um to me that just it, it's just always been a little bit of conflict of interest and it, it it and it seems to it seems like it, they play favorites a little bit more and what is i mean what's your thoughts on that i mean what's how do you feel about that and i don't know you've had you've had a great you've, you've had a lot of good tournament success over there but you've kind of had some run-ins with some of them too yeah um you know, I don't, I don't really know too much about how the ownership stuff works. Um, I'm just not super familiar with it. In my opinion, uh, when, like, you know, from my perspective looking in, it's kind of odd having to fish against people that know the financials and know the money that right. comes and goes <laughs> and what's being paid, what's not being paid. You know, to me, fishing against a guy that knows that is just – doesn't sit right you know it's just weird yeah um, and, and and that's my exact thoughts and that that's why i asked you we we, we kind of got the same train of thinking on that on that topic yeah in my opinion if you're an ownership in the business or you own part of the business you need to be running the business and not fishing right. um right that's just my perspective on it yeah you know if i if i owned a major stake in the company i would be more concerned about making sure it's running right and running properly and prospering yep. versus dancing around this and that and trying to fish at the same time yep. i mean I, I know we all love the game of fishing and the comp you know the competitive side of it but um you know my perspective if i were a big time ownership you know had big time ownership in it i would be making sure the business is running the best it can be running and that would be my priority <clears throat> right um, that's it right yeah right. Um, we're getting a lot of good comments too. Pe people are a big fan of yours, Zach, because you know you don't pull any punches and you, and you tell it like it is. And, and what, you know, it's funny that that Luke got you on his podcast because I think him and I saw probably some similar Facebook posts because we follow you on social media about the latest uh, incident that took place and said, man, Bert, Bert has got a lot to say, I think. We need to get him on, and I think Luke had the same idea. So um, it, we just yeah. – we appreciate your honesty, man, and we appreciate you laying it out there. And there's just a lot of guys that, um, <clears throat> you know, they, they don't want to say anything for – for fear of, you know, maybe a, a, a sponsor, you know, frowning upon it or, or one of their, you know, so-called buddies that they fish against getting pissed off at them or whatever it is. But, um, but I, you know, I think, I think when something like this takes place, it needs to be brought to light. And that's why I text you to get you on the show because we, I just don't, here, here's, here's my thing. And, and I listened to your podcast with Luke and it was great. Um, you, you 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 said a lot of things that I would have said tonight. I'm trying not to be repetitive, and, and Luke did too. Uh, but it, here's here's the issue I have with it. Um, the first the first of all that it was delayed. Um, you know the 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 reaction from MLF, the punishment, whatever you want to call it, was delayed. The second thing is that it was completely disrespectful to do that to your competitors. And when you don't have respect for your competitors you don't deserve to compete at that level. And, you know, that is no different. 
and I know y'all said this on Luke's podcast, and then stealing, taking out of another man's pocket, putting fish in a basket, because when you know that that rule that's been in place for how many years now, what, every season you've been there, right? And that's from the time your schedule comes yeah. out, it's a no-info rule, right? That's right. It's been there since day one. Yep, same as the Bassmaster Elites. Once the schedule comes out, it's over. No more info. Um, and for, right. for, for that to be blatant and intentional as it was, I'm going to sit here, and, and I'm not going to claim that it happened, but, I mean, how can you sit here and, and think that it hasn't happened at every tournament for the entire career that he's been over there, right? I mean, I, I just, I don't, I don't, I can't grasp that concept. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, I feel the same way. I mean, I've been on the phone today while I've been driving with at least, at least 10 anglers uh, in the industry, and, you know, it, it's unanimous. I mean, you can't just mistakenly no. take info for one tournament, you know, uh, not, not take it. You outreached it, you know, <laughs> went out of your way to gain information. Yeah. So you can't sit there and say that it was an accidental uh, thing that happened. And from the other guys looking in on it, you got to think, I mean, hell, he's, I'm sure there's been information gained every other tournament. And for that matter, he's essentially, if he's finished above you, he's taken earnings away from you at every tournament. Yeah. Um, and, and you can only go. So, he's fixed ahead of. Yeah. And you can only go so far back, right? Do you remember, <clears throat> I know you're a little younger than me, but do you remember the Tony Christian incident years ago with FLW? do not okay so tony christian if you look his profile up i, I believe it should still be on the uh what used to be flw now major league fishing.com if you look his profile up and you look at his track record it was pretty unreal he he won an all-american <clears throat> he won numerous bfls he won all kinds of big fish pots and bfls the guy was his track record was truly um unreal and you just look him up when you get a chance later this evening or something and and he got busted for uh, uh, for putting placing fish in some kind of contraption. He was actually pitching in and catching them out of. Dude, it was crazy. Like it was crazy, crazy, right? The wildlife, uh, excuse me, came in and set up a sting. They busted the guy. But to your point, if you look back at his track record, this guy's been doing it. It was very, very, very calculated what he was doing and how he was doing it. It's hard to find kind wow. of the whole case online now. But if you go back and look at his history. It's just like what you said. This guy stole not just one time, but probably hundreds of times. And that's not counting like local derbies and things like that. And my point is, and, and to your point, when somebody is finally caught and busted and brought to light for intentionally breaking a rule that puts that gives them an edge over the entire field, then that needs to be punished to the extreme. It's not like Zach Burge forgot to buckle his life jacket while idling across this cove, okay? That deserves a delayed blast off the next day or a five ounce penalty or something like that. But a rule infraction sure. and a blatant cheating violation to me is two entirely different topics, right? Correct. So in my I'm mind, sure. when, you, when you foul hook a bed fish on camera or whatever, and then you go back and you do something like this. And, and you know, I talked to, my, Wheeler's a close friend of mine. I talked to him on the phone a long time the other night about all this. And there's been a lot of rumors about Wheeler too. Um, and I'll, t I'll touch on that stuff in a minute. But one thing that he said that really stood out is, is, is he said that MLF is kind of a three strikes and you're out deal. Now, when he told me that, I was kind of taken back because I'm like, when you say three strikes, do you mean three strikes of not of not culling your you know fifth fish before you or your sixth fish before you make another cast or do you mean three strikes by blatantly sending texts to get fishing locations so where's where's that line there and are, and are you even aware of the the three strikes and you're you're out so to speak deal yeah yeah i've, uh, I've actually touched on it a couple times today with different people um and it's not something I really thought much about, but it is interesting. And uh, I guess there's, you know, I guess he would, he would probably be on this second, on his second strike. But at, at the same time, I don't know what they consider uh, actual <laughs> strike. You know, it, like in my mind, 
something like not buckling a life jacket, something's it's not entirely that big a deal. You know, 10 minute delay taking off, that's fine, whatever, uh, no big deal. But blatantly receiving information and getting information, that's a strike in my opinion by far. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, that's. I guess that's what I was asking. So, so you're. Um, you're about as unclear on that as you were on the, the, the fine that they were going to give you when they called you <laughs> about leaving the event. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And you know, that, that goes back to that. It's, you know, um, when I was informed that if I left, I would be receiving a fine or no, I would be, I would receive a fine and then there would be a suspension, but nobody's knowledge like nobody knew what that was at the moment like nobody could tell me what that would be so i had to tell them somebody needs to give me an answer whoever's dreaming things up to throw out i need to know within an hour because i'm packing my stuff to go somewhere else and i need to know if it's you know i need to weigh my options here and see what you know what's it going to be is it going to be a hundred bucks sure i'll throw away a hundred bucks to go do what i want to do um, or is it going to be five, ten, twenty thousand dollars? That makes a difference. I need to know this thing. And, and if you're going to tell me there's a penalty for it, uh, shouldn't you already know the penalty and be able to assess it on the spot versus having to go back and somebody's dreaming something up behind the scenes to throw out there? And then when I found out that it's, you know, up to subject to up up to a twenty-five thousand dollar fine and a and a stage four suspension. Now we're getting $25,000 potential for at least another 32, 70 something, whatever it is. So um, there's a good chance I'm going to make $10,000 at least. So that's $25,000, $35,000. You add up uh, losing points for red crest and heavy hitters. That's probably another $20,000. That's $45,000. That adds up to where financially it makes no sense to do what I was uh, <coughs> anticipating doing. So basically they had me buy they had me buy my things you know and, <laughs> and I, I had to stay i had to stay and fish yeah that, um, which it ended up being a great outcome it was a good tournament I, I caught them good and you know everything was great but the fact that i did not do anything wrong and i did not cheat didn't break any well in these rules for that particular tournament it's a separate contract you're obligated to fish the entire event that you qualify for until you're eliminated I didn't even know that until that evening. Uh, I reread through everything to just, you know, make sure everything was correct on both sides. And it is, but there's no, there's no info regarding what happens if you leave a day early. And I was leaving a day early uh, where there's still plenty of people in competition, plenty of people for a camera got to go to would have made no difference um, on anybody's part. Uh, I was the one that was going to be affected because I was choosing to do something on my own and go somewhere else to the interest was better for me to do that at the moment. And that's why I was choosing to do that. But when they, you know, came up with all these crazy fines and suspensions out of nowhere, I chose to do otherwise, you know, just for a financial standpoint. Um, and then here we have the Sprague deal, which you know, the Sprague deal was one thing and I'm a, you know, everybody's kind of a little irritated about it. The fine should have been a little stiffer in my opinion. That's just my personal opinion on it. Well, so, and I so, probably wouldn't have. So sorry, Zach, but what, Go ahead. what was the fine and had he, <clears throat> had he been paid the $30,000 or whatever he won for that event, he had to turn that in. And then what about, um, his, his fine on top of that? What, what was the punishment? Cause I'm, I, I don't even know what that was. Well, to my knowledge, as of today, like when we get paid, it's direct deposit for the most part. I'm pretty sure everybody's on that now. Okay. Once, you know, within, within a week or so after the event, you receive your money. So I'm sure he's cut him a check and sent it back. Okay. Um, that's the, in quote, fine that he had, which is essentially not a fine. Hey, that's not You're a fine. You're just giving back what you paid. Yeah, that's not so, a fine. And, and to my knowledge, there's no fine on top of it. And he just loses his points for that one event that's a slap on the wrist yeah that's for for that for that i mean it's breakage absolutely i agree it's com it's complete joke honestly and when especially when you compare the two with what was attempted 
to happen to me for just leaving a day early versus somebody that blatantly disregarded one, one of the number one rules in our tournament. Yeah. Um, that, that's what rubbed me the wrong way. That's what irritated me was the comparison there. You know. Yeah, that's, that's uh, not that was my big. That's, that's like my, apples and oranges. That's not even close. Right, right. Yeah, and, you know, that's just the way I feel about it. And, um, <clears throat> Well, rub me the wrong way. Yeah, I, th- I think you're in the majority, uh, Zach. Hands down. That's. I mean, I'm looking at comments from almost 200 live viewers here, and and you know, there's a lot of them that says MLF is you know not a fan of their anglers fishing anything other than the events that they put on, and and I understand that from a business perspective, but also as a professional angler, when we're doing this to 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 to, to provide for our families, and we're doing this because this was our dream as a kid growing up. We all kind of have the same backstory, right? And you know, John yeah. Cox did this at a Bassmaster event. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think last year or the year before, maybe he, he made a day three cut and he backed out to make, make it to a BPT event or whatever it was. And no big deal, right? They gave him the, the $10,000 check. He took, um, you know, the 50th place finish as far as points are concerned. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, does Bass frown on it a little bit? I'm, I'm sure they did. I don't, I don't, there was no fine that I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think. And, and, and major punishment. But here's the thing, like we as professional anglers, and you touched on this earlier, we have to make the decision that's best for us and our family, first and foremost, and our sponsors and our career, period. Um, yep. The organizations that we fish with, regardless if it's MLF or, or BASS, they, they need to support their anglers at, at their fullest potential based on the decisions that we're making for our families and for us because if, if you run over if you leave a bpt uh, you know here, here's here i'll just i'll just cut to the chase I, I just feel like that they are you know they've lost how many anglers to the to the elite back to the elites in the last two or three years it's six or seven guys now i think it's seven guys you know i'm gonna sit here and name them but everybody knows who they are um there's a couple guys yeah. still trying to come back over um, they're trying to protect what they have, and, and, I, and I get that. But there's a reason those guys are trying to get out, right? There's a reason for that. And the reasons are starting to come uh, to light now, you know, with, with the way they handle situations like this. And, and I just, I, you know, I, I think I'm with, I'm with Luke Duncan when he says we need two major tours in the U.S. to be successful, and I 100% agree with that. Um, but I think sometimes they need to sit back, take a look. And, and in a perfect world, Bassmaster and MLF and the BPT get along. We even have like a world championship with the top 25 guys from each circuit. I mean, from a fan perspective, and I think yep. all the fans and the viewers and that. the people that are watching tonight would agree with this. From a fan perspective, that would be the ultimate, right? Like the old days of the TTBC and things like that, where we have a combined championship. We have these huge non-endemic sponsors come in and throw up, you know, millions of dollars for us to fish for, and 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 that that in a perfect right. world, that that's what would happen. But you and I both know that between BASS and MLF, um, there's going to have to be some crazy major disaster to happen in the industry for them to get along. And uh, But I would love yeah. to see that happen. That, that's a fact. And, you know, I, when I, the last couple of years, I've fished a bunch of tournaments in one year. Last year I fished BPT and the Pro Circuit. This year I fished all, well, I was tempting to fish all nine opens and the BPT. Um, you know, I, I just love fishing. I don't care what it is. I don't care what format it is. I just like bass fishing. I have fun. Yeah, I enjoy the competitive side of it. So when I signed up to fish all nine opens this year, a lot of people assumed that it was strictly to leave. It was primarily to give me options and if schedules allowed it, I planned on fishing every one of the tournaments I could on both circuits because I love fishing and I, and I like the competition and I like, I like both formats and I have really good friends in both organizations. Uh, a lot of assumptions were uh, that I was just, you know, I qualified, I was gone. That's not totally the case, uh, but I was going to give myself options, you know, right. to have. And if the schedule presented itself right, I'd fish both. Um, I still have those opportunities in front of me, um, you know, and that's things like this make my decision, you know, it, it complicates things because <laughs> it irritates me with the way the situation was held. Um, you know, it, if, if it had come out when 
they obtain the information and people would quit tiptoeing around hurting somebody's feelings or whether it puts a negative image on so-and-so or whatnot, if they quit tiptoeing around that, actually crack a whip and do something about it and make a statement, they'd be more respected. People would, you know, it would be a better image all around and you'd have more respect from not only uh, people outside of the industry looking in, but also the anglers involved. Um, you know, and that, it, they could have had a very different outcome, but, you know, if it had, if it hadn't been brought to the public's attention, I don't necessarily think that there would have ever been anything done that anybody would have known about. Uh -huh. I know there's been things done in the past that nobody knows about. At least it's not public knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So, and for the way, for the, the person it happened to, the companies that he associates with and works with, you know, that, that doesn't draw the best image on MLF because he got caught doing what he was doing. So I'm sure they didn't want that to be public knowledge. <laughs> I mean, I, it's a negative image. I can't see why they would want that to come out. So, but when you, when you lay it out like that in front of the public, you have to make a statement on it. And I think it was a very vague and, and weak, weak comment and, uh, weak outcome, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. I, you know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Sprague has some pretty big non-endemics that are also big supporters of MLF, right? Correct. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how this unfolds because, you know, to your point, it, it kind of leaves a little bit of black eye on the industry for the companies that support uh, an angler who can do this and then they continue their support of him, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm just surprised, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised at the outcome like you are, but I'm also interested to see the outcome uh, overall, like after the end of this year, does he keep fishing? Does he keep his sponsors? Does, um, you know, these companies stand behind him? Because like I said, it's not like he, you know, forgot to call before he made another cast. You know, it's a little bit different in my eyes and your eyes too and everybody else's eyes apparently. But um, right. it, it'll, be, it'll be interesting right. to see how it unfolds. Um, <coughs> so I saw, I saw a, uh, a comment that I want to I wanna get your feedback on because I feel like you and I are, are, are right in line with each other when it comes to this. I, <coughs> I, I hear all the time, and you do on tour, whether it's from – a fan, another fisherman, a recreational fisherman, another pro, uh, a marshal, whatever, that it's he said, she said game, right? It's like, oh, so-and-so got information from so-and-so, or so-and-so went out and practiced during the off-limits, or so-and-so did this. And they, they tell you, Zach Burge, this to see if you'll go turn them in or report them or to spread the rumor even more, okay? And we get that all the time, right? From all kinds of people. Yep. And the problem I have with that, and this is what I say to every single one of them. And, and um, Brandon Mayo said this earlier, and Brandon, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call you out, all right? I love you, buddy, and I appreciate you being on, but I'm gonna call you out. He said, I know of one Elite Series guy who calls people to get info all the time, and I'm sure there's more that do the same thing. So here's what I'd say to Brandon and everybody else. Bottom line is if you witness or you have hard evidence, or you actually see with your own eyes somebody blatantly breaking a rule, I don't care if you're a bystander or whoever, you call our tournament director and you turn them in and see if they'll go polygraph them or whatever. If, if, if we're another professional angler, if Zach Burrs tells me, well, you know Sprague went and did this, if I didn't see it happen, if he ran a no weight zone and I didn't see it happen, but Burrs did, then Burrs should turn him in, not me. And if, if I didn't right. witness it, I'm not turning them in. I'm not playing games, but if I witness it, I did this to Drew, Drew Cook. So Drew Cook, uh, who's, a, who's a great fisherman, good buddy of mine, a phenomenal angler, uh, two years ago, three years ago maybe, at Winyaw Bay, he went through what I thought was a no-wake zone on plane. Well, I called Lisa and turned him in, okay, because I saw it with my own two eyes. There was a couple locals sitting on the bank. Um, 
and, and, and they had told me it was a no wake zone. Well, it said, this, I went back and the, I looked at the sign that said, you're responsible for your wake, and there's a buoy on one side and a buoy on the other. Technically, that was not a no-wake zone. I was in the wrong. Drew was in the right. I was eyeing it this whole time like a dummy, apparently, <laughs> and Drew was running it. So long story short, I believe this, yeah, this was at Winyah Bay. Um, I, I actually went up and told Drew. I said, man, I'm sorry, you know, for turning you in. I thought you broke a rule. And he was cool about it, you know, and, and we talked about it like men and we got over it. You know, I turned him in and, and he was found, uh, you know, perfectly. Uh, uh, not guilty. Yeah, not guilty, basically. So, um, and then Lisa explained why he was, oh, a trip at the time explained why he was not guilty of it. And I said, cool, no problem. And I, I apologize to Drew for doing it. Um, but point is, if we see something happen, we turn it in. But all these people that are telling us, I know that he did this, then they're the ones. If you know for a fact that somebody did something, you have hard evidence, you turn them in. Because if not, you're just as guilty as they are. And that's my opinion. Yeah, and that's correct. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's at the same time, you know, it's you're messing with, you know, you're, you're messing with somebody's professional career when you're talking about he said, she said type stuff. Yeah. So if you didn't physically lay your eyes on it or you didn't physically see the actions take place, then there's no, I mean, you have nothing, like, you might as well just throw it out the window and not think about it and, you know, get gone past it. And, but if you did, if you sat there and you physically witnessed something happen, yeah, I mean, if you don't report it, then you're just as guilty as the person that committed the, the incident. I mean, that's, that's just part of it. I mean, I, I bust my butt every day I'm on the water to do the best that I can for my family. And for somebody to come in and steal from you that does not sit well with me you know especially when when the 90 percent of the guys are are out there doing the same thing busting their tail to provide for their their wives and kids and make ends meet and you know it, it's irritating when you think about it like that a hundred percent and that's that's the biggest issue i have with it too as a as a professional angler you know, we're all supposed to be on an equal playing field, right? And when something like this happens, you know, we start to question the integrity of our sport and how things are handled and, and who gets away with what and how often is this really happening. Um, and let's be honest, I mean, it, it, I'm sure it's happened more. Um, I'm sure it will continue to happen in the future. Um, but it is the organization's responsibility, regardless of the organization, to, to, to drop the hammer and to make an example. And that is, uh, that is what needs to be... Um, you know, the, the main goal moving forward. Cause you know, if, 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 if spread, you know, I see some, co a lot of comments on here coming through that, you know, he should have been suspended for a calendar year. Um, <clears throat> he should have been expelled, you know, permanently. He should have been, you know, this, that, and the other, but you know, I, I, I and I'm not going to disagree with any of those comments. You know, I, I think that the punishment was, was very light. I think it was not. Uh, harsh enough and it did not set a good enough example because if uh, if you and I are sitting back watching this as his competitors we're sitting here going man God I feel like you can get away with almost anything nowadays you know I mean <laughs> yeah I mean I'm, I, that's the thing it when, when you're a competitor looking in at it and I'm not I'm not saying any any one of the 79 other guys has a mind like this I certainly don't but when you're looking at it from our perspective, you go okay, so I can risk five thousand or five hundred dollars to make five thousand dollars. Who wouldn't do that? Right. But when you're looking at it as being honest and not being honest, playing by the rules and cheating, that that would never sit with me. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. I couldn't risk ten thousand dollars to make a hundred thousand dollars. I just wouldn't do it. You know, if I can't do it the honest way, I'm not going to do it at all. Yeah, and, that's... but the pro the problem with it is they were so soft on it that I know there's people out there that will go and risk five hundred for five thousand or a hundred thousand ten thousand for a hundred. Yeah, I, mean... I promise you, they're gonna <laughs> risk it. They're gonna take that chance. Yeah, um... I'm not. But the problem is they let that get by, 
and now it will happen. But if somebody knows, somebody's sitting there thinking, well, they're not gonna, they're, they're not gonna be harsh on them. They're not gonna do nothing. Hell, I'll, I'll go out there and do that. I'll go out and fish like this, or I'll go out and get get info and risk it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, if and here we are, we're supposed to be taking polygraphs at every tournament, but nobody knows who passes or fails because they don't say anything about it, and <laughs> nobody knows what the fines are. Nobody knows how stiff the penalty is gonna be. Uh, it's just, you know, if, I don't know. The way I was raised, if you did wrong, you got your ass whipped. Yeah, I mean, that's a good yeah, way I to agree. put it. Just, <laughs> I agree. I agree. That's, just, that's just the way it's always been. So if I go out here and I cheat and I get caught, I expect to be suspended from the remainder of the year, and I don't have the conscience enough. I can't, I can't come back and, and show my face and fish against the people I stole from. I right. just can't do it. Yeah. I'd have to move on my life and do something different. Couldn't couldn't face it. Yeah. So, you know, if they had if they had set an example, and it's you know at the same time, Sprague, you know, if if it hadn't come to the public light, he wouldn't be put in the position he's in, with everybody knowing about it and this being done today. But so it's kind of it's 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 unfortunate for him for that perspective but he broke a rule he needs to be punished for it right I agree. but right. you know the other guys that nobody knows about i mean nobody knows anything about that but if they had come out and said from day one if you break a rule this is your punishment you don't fish anymore or you sit out for a whole calendar year that would take out almost every uh ac- you know every every incident i doubt anybody would be messing around you know <laughs> Yeah, but I, unfortunately, they're soft on it, and that's just the way it played out. Yeah, so hundred uh, percent. I real quick, <clears throat> I'm just getting I'm getting a bunch of questions, obviously, but uh, and, and you know, I encourage you, I encourage everybody to listen to a good podcasts out there. But Luke Luke Duncan's Low Budget Live has a good one with Zach last night, and it's it's live on YouTube now. Um, not live, but it's uh, it's actually available on YouTube now. You can check it out um, to answer a lot of the questions that we're not going to be able to get to because we're running out of time. But Jody Wright uh, and 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 Bo Adams on here. Bo Bo wanted to know how it came to how it came to light. Well, it was through a text thread that was finally turned in between Sprague and uh, the 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 other person that uh, actually uh, uh, I believe it was a fellow Elite Series angler, was it not? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um... Uh, and, and, he, and he was. I'm not gonna. Well, I, I'm not gonna bring his name out, but he, he, I, I think he was pretty honest in the situation because, from my understanding, you know, he asked, "Aren't you in the off limits?" And you know, um, the exchange was anyway. We're not gonna go there. But um, yeah. what about yeah, those, those screenshots? You can see those. Yeah, you can, out see, there. It was, <laughs> you can see it, those on. It was turned. It, it was turned in not too long after the event, and uh, okay, my knowledge they sat on it. That was the next question. So when did it actually, so the, the questions are, you know, why did it take this long to come out? When did they actually have that in their possession? Do you know? I don't know the exact, the exact dates, but I, um, it was, it was fairly soon after the event. Okay. And that was what, that was, the, was that the Lake Fork event? No, that was, that was um, Darbonne, Bussy, that one, first one of the year in Louisiana. And that was, was that February? That was February, yes. February, okay. All right. Um, good enough. Well, that's uh, that's kind of, we, we, I hope we answered a couple questions with one shot there. But um, <clears throat> Tyler, who's co-hosting with me tonight, had a question. Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, I don't know if he can hear me, but I'm just curious. Um, I'm sure a lot of people out there are as well as far as the spray. Was he one of the original uh, cup guys or not? Some reason I'm thinking he was an original cup guy. Yeah, Before I'm not then, sure. BP, no, he was not. He was not. Yeah, he was not. Um, so there's a, a you know, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm getting sorry, Zach. I'm getting a lot of funny comments on here, <laughs> but uh, um, you know, a lot of guys are, are just are just glad this this is actually coming to 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 light now and. And you know, I, I'm sure you're all, you're probably tired of talking about it, but I appreciate you coming on here and chatting with us for a little bit. But how many? So other than Luke's and ours, how many podcasts have you done about this so far? 
Just, just yours. Okay. I've answered a lot of questions. <laughs> just those two. I've, I've literally, I left, I left my house this morning at, uh, shoot. I was planning to leave around two, but I didn't get to bed after doing all kinds of stuff last night until about 10 30. So I, I ended up leaving at four. I've been on the road all day today, but I think I got my first phone call this morning about 6 30. Oh. And that one lasted about two hours. So oh, wow. we, we have, and I've made several throughout the day. So we've been, there's been a lot of chat going on. I can imagine. And you're a popular guy in the last few days, it sounds like. So you've been talking about, have you, be honest, have you literally been talking about this topic? pretty much all day on the phone while you've been driving? A good bit of it. Yep. <laughs> and how long have you been driving today? You said about 12 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours now? Oh, yeah. Uh, 13 Oh wow. Or so now. Wow. Well, how, uh, how close are you to Cayuga? Uh, GPS shows six hours. So I still got a bit. I just want to knock down a bunch of it today, and I'll just ease over tomorrow as we got a meeting. So I'm sure that's going to be interesting. Oh Lord! <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Zach. First and foremost, I want to tell you thanks for uh, thanks for getting on with us tonight, man. I know, uh, we don't we don't get to hang out, we don't get to talk much anymore because I know we're on different circuits. Maybe that'll change in the future, maybe not, but um, we will see. And uh, you know, you have an open invitation to come out here and kill an Eastern anytime. And I'm still uh, I'm still looking to try to figure out a time I can come out there and kill my bucket list Rio with you. Hey man, I, I know where quite a few of them live, so if you ever want to come out, yeah, take some turkey or shoot some oaks, just come on. All right, man, you the man, Zach. Thank you so much for calling in, and uh, be careful heading up to New York, and uh, good luck at Cayuga, man. We'll be rooting for you. All right, buddy, I appreciate it. All right, see you, buddy. See ya. All right, y'all, so uh, Mr. Zach Burge, who is a uh, – you know, I, I consider him a good friend just because he, he's a good old boy. He's honest. He's a good guy. He, he'd definitely be a guy that I'd call if I was in trouble, needed something. Um, and, and he tells it like it is. You know, we, uh, we had the pleasure of fishing against each other for several years on the FLW Tour. And I, and I, and I miss those days. I honestly do. I um, have a lot of close friends over there. And, uh, you know, I know Zach is <clears throat> keeping his options open. Uh, if he qualifies for the elites this year, be interesting to see what kind of decision he makes. Uh, but Zach's a phenomenal fisherman. He's 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 been successful regardless of where he fishes, what format he fishes. He's proven he can do it all. Um, he's uh, definitely a bright young angler. With uh, uh, you know, he's he's had a great career and he's going to have a uh, he's got a lot of good years ahead of him. So, but that being said, um, it is after eight o'clock and uh, we cannot uh, we cannot thank y'all enough for tuning in. We've had a really big turnout tonight. So uh, and Tyler, man, thanks for co-hosting. Hey. No, anytime. I'm, I'm always here. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, and I know I talk a lot. Even my wife sent a message on the live feed earlier. Well, I she said say, she she said I love you, but let Zach talk a little bit more yeah. if you don't mind. So I want to get a real quick. If everybody out there don't mind. Yeah. This is about BASS. They put out a recent thread. I put a video out about this on my page. Okay. The change to the opens. Yeah. Next year for qualification okay, for so the elites. We, I, I have an input. We have I'm to curious. have a whole other show about that. Okay. Well, next um, time. <laughs> we will. We will. We will lure y'all in. That'll be with, next show. With a hot topic for the next show on LTF, and that's going to be we'll talking about. We'll make Jeff about, stay, and it can be. Yeah, Jeff built on us, by the way. Brian and me. Yep. Um, and Jeff, you know, Jeff may or may not, I mean, uh, not Jeff, uh, Thrift may or may not have a lot to say about it since yeah. he's, you know, he's fishing the BPT. And, but I'd be interested to get his take as an outsider looking in. He has, you know, he, he's he's not he's not one side or the other. I know? got two takes as a person <laughs> looking to try to get into opens next year. Well, but I got I, two different. I'll be interested to hear your takes. But so we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna tease a little bit. We're gonna talk about it. that's yeah. a hot topic lately too. Very hot. And I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, but we will definitely bring that up on the next uh, on the next podcast here at LTF. All right. So it is time for. Our LTF trivia giveaway. Drum roll. Uh, drum roll. You got a drum roll? That's pretty good, actually. Um, the giveaway tonight is a Lucker Text package valued at over what, Tyler? It's your call. Jeff's not here. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, how much do we really want it to be? I mean, make it whatever we want. I mean, it's going to be a whole bunch of goodies from Lucker Text, yeah. which is all kinds of different brands across really? the industry. Big old box of tackle valued at over uh 
Seventy-five dollars. Over seventy-five dollars. All right, we just picked a number, threw it out there. Over seventy-five dollars. It was better in, than fifty and less. Than <laughs> less than, you're th- you're sit- I know what you're doing. You're sitting there thinking, if I say hundred, Jeff might get pissed at me. But if I say seventy-five, he'll be good. No, Jeff wouldn't care either no, way. He wouldn't care. Yeah, Ryan actually came in and said, "Go all out since Jeff is gone." <laughs> Over seventy-five dollars worth of fishing tackle from Lunker Text, y'all. Um, all right, that that is the giveaway. We do have a trivia question, which uh, I came up with, but uh, Tyler actually helped me calculate because. I suck at math, bottom can line. You, uh, Alright. Can you read my handwriting? Can you read my handwriting? Yes. Okay. Alright. So make sure I word this right too, because if I don't word this right, it's really gonna confuse everybody. Um, trivia trivia question tonight is, and this is for the Lunker Text giveaway, a box of tackle valued at over $75, all kinds of goodies from Lunker Text. It is can all right, well, sorry, I didn't even start it right. Oh. I screwed that up. So the top 10 guys at the St. Lawrence River, okay? Their cumulative weight, all right? The top 10 guys from the St. Lawrence River. I see a comment on here from Let's Talk Fish, which is supposed to be us. It says, go $150. Now, wait a minute. Is that Jeff? Is that Jeff tuning in? And If that's Jeff, it could be. No, I don't think my I don't think Emily, I don't think my wife has access to tune in. <laughs> Our YouTube gotta be I don't even know our password to YouTube. Yeah. So it's got to be I'm Jeff. surprised Jeff knows the let's password. Just, let's, just, let's just keep it safe and say over $100. Yeah. All right. Just in case. All right. Over $100. And a minimum of over $100. That he Ryan said. Oh, that is Jeff. He said he's always watching. All right. Up to, you're watching a game. Up to 150 Or let's just say 150 Heck with it. He said 150 Let's do 150 We're giving away $150 in tackle tonight, y'all. I, I mean, we already dropped like 30 viewers. That too bad for them. People are throwing yeah. numbers out. They don't even know what the question is. Like, first of all, y'all aren't even close. No. All right. So here we go. Here's the question. Y'all listen closely. Quit throwing these crazy answers at us when we hadn't even finished the question. The top 10 anglers, okay, weighed in over four days. They weighed in a, a, a ton of bass, okay, to put it lightly. A ton, a ton of big, giant smallmouth. I need to know the average weight of the smallmouth that they weighed in over four days for the top 10. The average weight in pounds and ounces of the smallmouth that they weighed in for four days in pounds and ounces. Did I, did I say that right, Tyler? Sounds, sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, it's not confusing? I, I see some answers coming in. Okay, uh, yeah, I see the look. answers. All right, the answers are getting right now. Yes, yeah, so they in, understand. In pounds and ounces, in pounds and ounces, not like quarters, and we're not doing hundreds, y'all. It's just pounds and ounces, okay? Pounds and ounces. Um, the average smallmouth at the top 10 weighed in over four days. I probably could have worded that a little easier. Uh, if you see a correct answer, you let me know. Guys, I don't want to say like 4.678. Like, I want to say like, you like know, five pounds, pounds four ounces, ounces yeah. or something like yeah. that. You know, like not uh, because we don't do calculations here. Like, Bo Adams said 479. Like, no, that's, that's, that's way too. It's not in hundreds, y'all. It's like pounds and ounces. There's no, somebody said five. Co- Jerry Glenn might have mistyped yeah. five, comma eighty five point one one. Yeah, that's way too complicated. Uh, we're getting a lot of really close answers. Very but, close. I mean, obviously, but we're not getting the right one yet. So, still looking for it for the uh, for the hundred and fifty dollar Lunker Text box giveaway. Going to be probably what? How many different brands? Eight to ten brands. At least. At least eight to ten brands of. Uh, of tackle from across well, we the industry. So much over there, I mean. Oh, I see some close ones. I see some really close ones. I mean, the answers are rocking and rolling right now, but we're just not getting one. Have you seen one yet, Tyler? I haven't seen one. I've Ooh. seen some close. Ooh. I mean, very close. Y'all, that was a good show tonight. I'm glad we had Burge on. We had yeah. a lot of fun with, with Zach. Zach's a good dude, man. He, he tells it like it is. and He's an unbelievable two pounds, seven ounces. Little low, little low, Chris. I'll give you that, little low. Um, unbelievable angler, unbelievable angler. And, and I would love the opportunity to compete against Zach again, but he's going to make the decision whether he requ- qualifies for the elites. Um, that's best for his family, you know, yeah. and that's uh, that's the most important thing. So, Tyler, I hope. Oh, I see one. I see one. Do you? I see one. You see it? I hadn't seen it. I may have just now seen it. Is it Bo Adams? All right, the first one that came on my feed, which is the only one that I can go off of, is Bo Adams. So anybody that answered the same answer, regardless of how it came in on your feed, I have to go off of my feed. 
So Bo Adams is the winner with four pounds, 14 ounces. It is four pounds, 14 ounces. I did see Ken Rose submitted the same answer, but it was it was after Bo. It was right after. So you, you got the I, same I thing. I finally came in. All right. Finally. So uh, Tyler and I are on the same page. Bo Adams, you are the champion. You have won over $150 in tackle from, uh, from Lunker Tech. So Bo, shoot me a message with your mailing address so we can get this out to you as soon as possible. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be right here. And uh, you know what? We got a hot topic for the next show. When will we be right here? Mike? You know, I, 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 I'll actually be right here next Tuesday. Wait. Yep. Um, I think I think I think I'll be around next Tuesday. So uh, I'll be here. we got a really hot topic to discuss next week. We'll also give a little preview of Lake Oahe, uh, backed up with the. Uh, um, uh, oh, where's my next event? Oh, La Crosse, Wisconsin, Wisconsin at the Mississippi River. We'll give a little preview of that. We're going to talk about the changes that Bass has made to the Bassmaster Opens, uh, pros and cons. We want to hear your feedback about that. Uh, Tyler, thanks for joining me. Hey, anytime that I can That's what get on this from. side yeah. <laughs> and not the other side. Well, you know what? It's, a, it's an honest miracle that nobody's sitting behind that laptop over there or that bottle of bourbon over there which is where you normally sit <laughs> yeah that's, that's normal uh, uh, and and and, yeah. and, the, and we've had no malfunctions we've had no Everything technical ran, uh, issues yeah it's it's been it's been very smooth our so calling worked great yeah i know i'm as impressed far as everybody i guess the comments everybody said it worked good i couldn't see them at the moment well no everybody said it was great great feedback so, uh, we're still getting answers i hope y'all heard us that bo adams is 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 the champion with four pounds 14 ounces <laughs> That was the average fish weighed in by the top 10 over four days, which is pretty unbelievable. That's like a five-pounder. Basically a five-pound smallmouth. Yeah. Um, the Bluetooth deal, the call-in deal worked great tonight, which is exciting for LTF because we're going to have all kinds of cool guests coming up. Um, when Thrift's traveling and I'm here, we can still have a show. Uh, we can get a – Lord, y'all get y'all tell us. Y'all tell us who you want to see on the show, and we'll, we'll reach out to them. Um, we'll make it happen. So – when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and do what, Tyler? We're going to talk fishing. See y'all next week. That's right.